Hey, how's it going, five fans? Welcome to Mindful Combat. If you're new to the channel, my name is Rohan. It's my platform where I do boxing and MMA related content. If you're new here, then why don't you help me grow my channel? All you have to do is hit that subscribe button, like the video if you like it, dislike it if you don't, and maybe get involved in the conversation in the comment section below. With that said, for this video, I'm going to be breaking down the upcoming boxing match, the upcoming boxing and heavyweight rematch between uh, Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz. Now, this is a very key and important fight, and I'm very honored to be joined by my friend here, James Buchanan. Hello. You guys would have seen James in a, a few of my other videos. If you haven't, then he's a former amateur boxer, loves boxing. Me and him watch practically all the biggest fights together. And we're going to be going through the Andy Ruiz, Anthony Joshua fight and breaking it down step by step. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? That's right. Yeah. So, bro, when we're looking at this fight, there's a couple of things that even before we're getting into the breakdown, this is a very, very important fight in the heavyweight division. Absolutely. Firstly, there's four belts on the line. Mm -hmm. All four of the key belts outside of the WBC world title was on the line in this fight. Yeah. You've got Anthony Joshua, a guy who was the poster, the, the world, you know, the world icon of boxing, the biggest star in boxing mm -hmm. in the world, and he took on a relative unknown in Andy Ruiz Jr. And me and you knew Andy Ruiz as yeah. hardcore fans, but most people didn't know who Andy Ruiz is. No. So he comes in, does the shocking upset, and now mentally, this is a big battle for Anthony Joshua in mm -hmm. terms of staying relevant or even relative in his career, right? Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. I mean, a lot of people don't really know who who Andy Ruiz was, which is surprising because a lot of people knew who Joseph Parker was and he gave Joseph Parker all types of problems, you know, he gave I him hell. I felt like he won that fight. Uh, exactly, same to the way. Yeah. I felt as if he won that fight myself. Um, so it's surprising that not a lot of people knew who he was, but, um, you know, it is what it is. A lot, a lot of people knew who he was and he, he went up against Joshua and now the whole world knows who he is. Yeah, yeah. And I, so I do think that yeah, it's, it's a very important it's fight. It's a very important yeah. fight at the minute. So with that said, let's go through the Taylor State, break it down. I'll tell you the stats and you can tell me your thoughts on it. So yeah, firstly, the first thing that jumps out to me is both these gentlemen are slap bang in the middle of their fighting primes. They're only 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Heavyweights tend to have a great shelf life. So no problem there. We can agree. Great time for them to be meeting. Slap bang in the middle, yeah? Yep. But where things get interesting is their records. Now, Andy Ruiz Jr., what you'll see is he's vastly more experienced than Anthony Joshua yeah, yes. in a relative term because Anthony Joshua's had much more high-profile fights, so how do we rate experience? But Andy Ruiz comes into this fight with a record of 33 wins and one loss. Mm -hmm. Anthony Joshua comes into this fight with a record of 22 wins and one loss. Now, do you think that experience is going to be a factor here? Well, I think that Anthony Joshua is relatively experienced enough to be able to hold his own in terms of experience, yeah. you know, he's, he's still had he still had quite a few, a fair few fights, yeah. you know. Um, although Andy Ruiz has st had the more fights, but it's not to say that uh, Joshua has had too little fights. Yeah. Well, uh, Anthony Joshua's got the much more high profile exactly, experience, so, exactly. so the experience should cancel itself out in, in a lot of ways. So really, in terms of aging experience, to so start bang in the middle where things get really interesting mm. now is now when we start talking about the size now. Andy Ruiz Jr. stands at six foot two. Mm -hmm. Anthony Joshua is a six foot six behemoth of a man. Yeah. He's vastly bigger mm -hmm. than Andy Ruiz, and obviously he sculpted Andy Ruiz. He's the um, poster child of Snickers now, so there's a difference there. <laughs> and then um, that that same um, that same size difference translates into the reach because Andy Ruiz Jr. has a reach of seventy four inches. Mm -hmm. Anthony Joshua has a reach of eighty two inches. That's eight inches in reach yes. and he's four inches taller than him now surely that's a factor it is a factor it is but I do feel as if what Andy Ruiz has got going for him with his speed yeah. and not only not only just that neither you got to remember he's, he's trimmed down a lot for this fight yeah, as well yeah. so that's going to play that's going to so play so you feel like that can negate the definitely, size definitely okay. yeah so okay. I feel as if where he's trimmed down quite a lot he's going to be a lot quicker and this isn't the same Andy Ruiz Jr. That, uh, that Joshua fought the first time yeah, around. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because it's the first time around when they fought, Andy Ruiz didn't really have that much notice. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, so his his speed, his natural abilities may be able to negate the size, but the size is definitely a factor that I think you guys should bear witness in because mm. Anthony Joshua is a much bigger man. Now, they both stand out of orthodox stance, which is good, so mm -hmm. that's, that's, uh, that's interesting. Now, mm -hmm. where things get different between both of these gentlemen and where you start to see a disparity in... in I won't say class, but where you start to see a disparity in, in, in terms of achievements in boxing is their key wins. So now with Andy Ruiz Jr., with no disrespect to his opponents who he's fought, of course we've got tons of respect for everyone in boxing, but his outside of Anthony Joshua himself, mm -hmm. his key wins come down to guys like Ray Austin, who's like a long-term journeyman, I would say. Mm -hmm. he's, he's nothing special. And he beat Alexander Drimtenko, mm -hmm. who's, who's another you know sort of gatekeeper, journeyman type of level. He just lost to Tony Yoko, who's only had six fights, you know. Um, Andy Ruiz has that loss to Joseph Parker, of course, which was a close fight, but mm -hmm. he hasn't really achieved on a massive scale. But when, when we're talking about Anthony Joshua's key wins now, 
Now, this is where things get really interesting. He's beating guys like Dylan the Villain from White. He's mm-hmm. beating Charles Martin, who was a world champion at the time. Now, world t- champions of relative term when we're talking about the IBO oh, title. Yeah, but he's a world champion exactly, nowadays, yeah. So. But Charles Martin's still a win that is worth noting. Yeah, yeah. He's beating him. He's beating the likes of Dominic Brazil, who's a um, top, uh, like a perennial top five contender in the heavyweight mm-hmm. division. He's very well respected. He's also beaten uh, Vladimir Klitschko himself, the great Vladimir Klitschko. Mm-hmm. He beat Joseph Parker pretty handedly, who beat Andy Ruiz. Beat Andy Ruiz, and then of course he's beaten the likes of Alexander Povetkin. Now there's a big disparity there. What's your thoughts on that? <clears throat> My thoughts is that uh, obviously Anthony Joshua has definitely fought the higher, most higher class fighters, and um, I think that is going to definitely work in his favor as you know he's been on that world platform so much more times than what Andy Ruiz has. Yeah, so, so yeah, he's, he's familiar with that pressure. Yeah, he's, he's familiar with that pressure. Yeah. He's, but I think right now when we talk about pressure. You know, there's, there's a lot more at stake for for Anthony Joshua at the minute because <clears throat> obviously he's had this loss with Andy Ruiz, yeah. And everybody is saying, well, here in the UK, all eyes are on him, exactly. right? Yeah. Here in the UK, all eyes yeah. are on him, all eyes are on him, and you know, it's a, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure to deal absolutely, with. You know what I mean? So um, yeah. you know, he's got he's got all that he's got all that to yeah. to come to yeah. come um, this month, well, yeah. next month rather. Yeah, and okay. So now moving on, let's look at some of the issues and X factors, and then we can look, move straight into the prediction. But mm-hmm. for issues for um, Andy Ruiz, uh, issue that jumps out of my mind to me for Andy Ruiz is a he could be overconfident. He pretty much dominated the last fight outside of that one knockdown. He dropped Anthony Joshua like four times. Mm. He he hurt him every time he wanted to. Every time he let his hands go, he he did, he um, dominated what happened to Anthony Joshua. He could come in in here um, overconfident. That could be an issue. And as I mentioned earlier, Andy, Anthony Joshua is a much bigger man than him mm. so that could be an issue for Andy Ruiz as well if Anthony Joshua is to fight smart smart and utilise his size the best way he possibly can mm. now when we're talking about Anthony Joshua and we're talking about issues is A there's a mental battle mm. for him coming off the first loss in the office yes, career there is. as you mentioned he's got immense pressure on him media immense. pressure from the British public immense. from his fans everyone around the world a loss here might be the end of his career absolutely do you, uh, do you see what I mean like yeah I see what you mean because at the end of the day there's a, there is a lot of speculation yeah. and rumours going around that that Joshua supposedly had a concussion he supposedly you know wasn't in the right frame of mind and his, his dad was telling Eddie Hearn that he needs to pull him out of the fight and X, Y, and Z. There's a, there's a lot of rumors going around that whether or not so, it's true, I don't and, know. But what we do know that brings with him pressure to perform. Exactly, the fight, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, also, another issue that I've, I've found with um, Anthony Joshua throughout his career, um, particularly that's relative to him personally forgetting the mental issue, is that I find him to be a predictable boxer. I feel like he walks in straight lines. Mm. He throws one, two, left hook, straight lines back, straight down forward. Mm. He's not. He's not Tyson Fury. You won't see him flipping angles. You don't see that with Joshua. He's devastating at what he does, mm. but he's predictable in a lot of ways. And at the top scale, I feel like Anthony Joshua kind of let himself be um, found by An- Andy Ruiz in that sense. Would you agree? I would agree that he can be quite a predictable fighter. I mean, yeah. he just he does come forward and you know he does throw the same combinations. But I think. He, do, he he slightly changes that at times, yeah. you know. Okay. I mean, there's 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 like instead of like doing one two left hook, he might do one two uppercut instead. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I'm trying to say is like those those slight differences I feel does make all the difference at yeah, times. Yeah. So now let's get into the prediction. Uh, you've had some really good points. I'm going to give you the floor. You can make the prediction for the guys. Um, what? How do you see the guy? How, does, how do you see the fight going? Right. So. It's, it's a very tough one to be fair like I say that there's a lot of pressure on Joshua at the minute to, to get this win and <clears throat> I feel as if he is going to go the extra mile to get it because this could be the end of his career if he suffers another loss at Andy Ruiz's hands so it's, it's hard but at the same time this is a completely different Andy Ruiz Jr because you know like I say he's had he's had um, sufficient amount of notice for this fight he's had weeks or months to prepare for it now as last time he didn't have that much time he's trimmed down a lot he's in a lot better shape he's looking like he's, he's in the best shape of his life so it's a really hard one to call if I had to call it I would reluctantly say Joshua 
Okay. But I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's a 50-50 yeah, I, I agree. This is a hard one to pick because there's so many intangibles at play in this mm. fight as well. It, I'm going to go completely the opposite direction. I feel like Andy Ruiz is all wrong for Anthony Joshua. I feel like mm. his hand speed, his angles give Anthony Joshua fit. I can see why you'd think that. I think yeah. they give him fit at any point in his career, regardless of how prepared Anthony Joshua is. We're gonna, like you said, mm. we're going to see a better, more prepared Andy Ruiz this time. And I feel like Andy Ruiz is going to comfortably win. I like Anthony Joshua and I would like to see him get the win here just so that the Wilder fight can come back to life but mm. I feel like this is Andy Ruiz's fight to win so yeah that's that's my prediction well right? time will tell yeah. this, you know what I mean next time, this time next week it's going to all be going down exactly yeah <laughs> well anyway thank you for coming on the video with me I've, I've really enjoyed it yeah, I, I know you're pleasure. planning to start your own channel soon so when he does guys I'll give him a shout out guys mm. check him out but regardless, thank you for watching, guys. I'm Rohan. This is Mindful Combat. Like I said, if you're new here, like the channel, or like the video, subscribe to the channel, help me grow my platform, and all that jazz. Thank you for watching. Take care.